Something that we might not always feel comfortable talking about is what we deposit in the toilet after evacuating our bowels. But this can be incredibly important, and I often tell my patients that it's good practice to take a look at what's in the toilet, because this can give us some clues about our digestive health. But sometimes we might deposit something in the toilet that shouldn't be there, and in this case I'm talking about blood. Many of us have probably had some amount of blood found on the toilet paper, in the toilet water, or mixed in with the actual stool. Now this can be something quite serious, or something that is of very little concern. But how do we know the difference? Well, I think it's important for us to learn what our rectums are trying to tell us. So today, we're going to talk about what causes rectal bleeding, the different locations where blood can originate, and we'll also discuss what the different colors mean, and again, when the bleeding is more of a mild issue, all the way up to something that's more serious. It's going to be an exploratory one. So let's do this. So first I want to orient you to the cadaver dissection that we're going to be using today. This is essentially the whole digestive tract minus the esophagus, and I've oriented it close to how it would sit in the human body. So first we have the stomach here, moving into the small intestine, which would occupy the lower central portion of your abdomen. And the small intestine can be broken down first into the duodenum, then moving into the jejunum, and then all the way down into the ileum. The large intestine we have oriented surrounding the small intestine. And this can be further divided into the cecum. We've got the ascending colon here, then the transverse colon that you can see me lifting up here, and then descending colon and the curved part of the sigmoid, and then we've got the straight rectum that would hook up to the anus. Now, I wanted to do that because we could technically have blood coming from anywhere potentially in this pathway. And so when someone says rectal bleeding, that is more of a general term that refers to any blood that passes from the anus, usually mixed with the stool, and then into the toilet. Well, hopefully into the toilet, we'd prefer to avoid any accidents here. But again, the blood could be coming from multiple locations and can range in color from bright red to dark maroon or even a dark tarry color. And as we'll learn, the color is an indicator of where the bleed is coming from and can also give us some insight onto how serious the bleeding actually is. So let's get into some of the different causes of rectal bleeding. The first cause of rectal bleeding that we'll talk about is overzealous wiping. Maybe you're wiping too much or a little too aggressively and or just a little bit obsessive and worried about the cleanliness of your anus. And this causes you to irritate the skin of the anus and you get a little bleeding. This could also be due to just increased frequency of the number of times that you're having bowel movements per day. And all of us have probably had those times where we get diarrhea and you're going to the bathroom much more often and therefore exposing the anus to more frequent wiping. Now, the color of this blood is typically bright red, as the toilet paper is literally touching the origin of the bleed. And this most often just is a minor issue with some fairly easy fixes. Two come to mind. One, you could get one of those amazing Japanese toilets with heated seats and a bidet, but those are quite expensive. So for more of an economical choice, you could treat your anus to luxurious flushable wipes. And with all this talk of hemorrhoids and other digestive system conditions that we'll soon learn about can cause bleeding within the GI tract, it can be important to have a supplement that supports gut health. And this is where the sponsor of today's video comes in, and that is AG1. AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that's backed by research studies. It's packed with 75 ingredients that not only support gut health, but also support focus, energy, nutrient replenishment, immune health, and more. One of the things I love most about AG1 is that it has a comprehensive formula, and instead of needing to add any more supplements to my daily routine, I get everything I need in one easy scoop. Not only does AG1 have multiple vitamins, minerals, and adaptogens, it also includes ingredients that can help keep my bowels regular, such as prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzymes. And in a recent research study, AG1 doubled the levels of healthy gut bacteria. These healthy bacteria help break down food, alleviate bloating, promote digestive regularity, and aid in digestive comfort. And so it's definitely nice to see that AG1 is constantly putting their formula to the test to ensure constant improvements. So if you're interested, go to drinkag1.com slash humananatomy to get a free bottle of vitamin D3K2 plus five extra travel packets of AG1 with your first purchase. Thanks again to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back to rectal bleeding. Next, we have those blasted hemorrhoids, and hemorrhoids are one of the most common causes of rectal bleeding. 
These are swollen or dilated veins in the rectum or in the anus, and they can cause discomfort, itching, and bleeding. Hemorrhoids can be internal, which means they develop inside the rectum, or external, meaning they form under the skin around the anus. Now, what's interesting is that internal hemorrhoids are associated with less pain and discomfort as compared to external hemorrhoids. And the reason for this is that they are innervated by different nerves. Internal hemorrhoids are innervated by visceral nerves. Visceral refers to internal organs. And organ structures that are innervated by visceral nerves are often less sensitive to pain and discomfort. Whereas external hemorrhoids are innervated by somatic nerves, which are much more sensitive to pain, temperature, and touch. The bleeding from hemorrhoids is usually bright red and might be noticed on the toilet paper or in the toilet bowl after a bowel movement, or even as a blood streak on the stool as the stool passes by the hemorrhoid during a bowel movement. Hemorrhoids most often result from increased pressure in the lower rectum, which can be caused by straining during bowel movements, prolonged sitting, and even pregnancy. Hemorrhoids are not really dangerous, but there are times where these external hemorrhoids can be quite painful especially if a clot forms within the hemorrhoid, and clot formation is called thrombosis. Now often when we hear the word clot, we often think that this is a very serious thing, but we are not talking about a clot in an artery to the heart, brain, or in the lungs. This is a clot in a dilated vein in the anus, and most patients can actually be treated symptomatically for the pain and discomfort while the body just dissolves the clot on its own. And this is actually how most patients with hemorrhoids are treated, with fairly conservative treatment at home. This can include topical anesthetic gels like lidocaine, anti-inflammatory creams like hydrocortisone cream, and even having patients do sits baths, which is soaking the area in warm water. This can help with the itching and even help relax the anal sphincters because often people with hemorrhoids will have increased tone in their anal sphincters. There are some patients with more severe hemorrhoids that can prolapse into the anal canal and cause more problems, and they may actually need a surgical procedure done in these cases. But prevention and reducing your risk of hemorrhoids is also advisable. This includes having enough fiber and water in your diet so you can minimize straining while on the toilet, and maybe don't sit so long on the toilet while you're playing on social media. Unless, of course, you're sitting on the toilet while watching YouTube videos from the Institute of Human Anatomy. I'm clearly kidding here. Don't watch me while you're on the toilet. Please watch from a different viewing location and reduce your risk of hemorrhoids. Another common cause of rectal bleeding is anal fissures. These are small tears in the lining of the anus, often caused by passing of a hard, large stool, vaginal delivery, or anal intercourse. The pain from a fissure can be quite intense, particularly during and after a bowel movement. Also, sometimes the fissure is deep enough that it can expose the anal sphincter muscle, and this can cause the sphincter to spasm which not only contributes to severe pain, but can also restrict blood flow to the fissure, slowing the healing process. The blood from a fissure is typically bright red, similar to hemorrhoids, and these are actually treated in very similar ways to hemorrhoids. Increased fiber and water intake can help reduce constipation and the formation of a hard stool. Sitz baths can help relax the sphincter and bring blood flow to the area, and topical anesthetic gels to help with the pain. Now, these anesthetic gels are often combined with topical vasodilators, such as nitroglycerin. And a vasodilator will dilate the blood vessels to help bring more blood to the area in order to help promote healing. Inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, is another cause of rectal bleeding. This term encompasses conditions like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, both of which cause chronic inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. In ulcerative colitis, the inflammation is usually limited to the rectum and the colon, leading to frequent episodes of bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain, and urgency to have a bowel movement. The blood can be mixed with mucus, but since it is in the colon and therefore has limited length to travel before it exits out the body, it is typically bright red in color. Crohn's disease, on the other hand, can affect any part of the digestive tract, from mouth to anus, with 80% of the patients having small intestine involvement, especially the distal part of the small intestine known as the ileum. Bleeding in Crohn's disease is often less common, but it can still occur, especially if it is affecting the colon, with 50% of the patients not just having their small intestine affected, but also having the colon affected as well. Now, although either one of these inflammatory bowel diseases could lead to life-threatening complications, this is pretty rare. However, they definitely are life-changing as they can greatly affect a person's day-to-day -day life. Managing IBD typically requires medical intervention, 
meaning the use of specific medications, and sometimes even surgery, where a surgeon would remove part of the damaged portion of the digestive tract. Now with this next one, I actually want to start with the color. Some people can have black, tarry looking stools, and this is referred to as melena. This color is an indicator that the bleed is much more proximal in the digestive tract, like in the stomach or the very beginning of that small intestine. Now this is often due to things like gastritis or inflammation of the stomach or erosions of the lining of the stomach. And let me show you this other dissection right here. This is the inside of another stomach here, and this is called the tunica mucosa. So like an erosion or a deeper erosion would be referred to as an ulcer. Now there is variability on how serious this can be. Like if an ulcer were to get bad enough and perforate the stomach, that can cause life-threatening complications. But most of the time, these stomach conditions can be managed before these serious complications arise. And finally, we need to discuss colorectal polyps and colorectal cancer, which is one of the more serious causes of rectal bleeding. And this is important because colon cancer is one of the most commonly occurring cancers and causes of cancer death. Now, polyps are small growths on the inside lining of the colon and or rectum. And while most polyps are benign, some can develop into cancer over time. Bleeding from polyps or colorectal cancer might be less obvious, sometimes presenting as what we refer to as occult blood, which is blood that you can't see with the naked eye, but can be detected with certain stool tests. In some cases, bleeding from colorectal cancer might be more noticeable, appearing as dark red or maroon blood mixed with the stool. Other symptoms of colorectal cancer can include changes in bowel habits, unexplained weight loss, and abdominal discomfort. But because the symptoms are not quite as obvious, this is why regular screening, like colonoscopies, is crucial for early detection and prevention of colorectal cancer. Because the earlier you catch it, the less likely it is to spread to other body regions. And when cancer cells spread to other body regions, this is known as metastasis. Now, we are actually pretty good at treating colon cancer if we catch it before it has metastasized. And with our lab, one of our bodies that we have shown in many of our videos actually died of colorectal cancer that metastasized to the liver. And once it spread to the liver, it made it very difficult to treat and ultimately led to the death of this body. So early detection cannot be stressed enough when it comes to cancer screening. And as far as the cancer screening guidelines for colon cancer, I'll put a link down in the description if you wanna check some of those out where it goes into age and certain risk factors and when you should begin this screening process. Thanks for watching today's video, everyone. And I do wanna say that we didn't cover every potential cause for rectal bleeding. So if you have any questions or topic requests, put those in the comments below. And again, thank you for supporting our channel. If you wanna watch some other videos on the digestive system, like how much food the stomach can hold or what happens when you swallow gum, we'll link those here. And of course, we'll see you in the next video.